Thank you. Hello, can you hear me properly? Because the last presentation wasn't very good at the listening. Can, can you raise your hand if you can hear me? Yeah, thank you, thank you. Wow, it's great that you came here today to listen to the B2B complete transformation from offline to online. Uh, what we would be talking about, we will talk about money. So this is probably the thing that you're most interested in. Exactly 87 million euro revenue uh, last year from the, on the company who actually wasn't online at all a few years back, like three years back. So this is another achievement that they did and actually uh, what we did with them. Uh, because a few weeks ago we came back from Las Vegas when we attended with the company I'm going to talk about today uh, a great conference, Imagine 2016, which is organized by Magento itself and we were the finalists, we took the third place there so I think that this is some kind of a proof that this project was indeed great yeah, so let's start First of all, let's talk a bit more about B2B e-commerce in general. 70% of, 75% of e-commerce B2B buyers claim that it's more convenient to them to buy from the e-commerce website than from a sales rep. Uh, another data is that in 2016, it is trusted that 30 buyers, 30 B2B, 30% B2B buyers is going to finalize their purchase, uh, half of their purchases online. And this is going to be doubled next year. Uh, yeah. 60% uh, of B2B buyers spend more when they are interacting with omnichannel. So it means the more channels you're going to provide them with, like mobile channel or sales rep channel, this is going to increase your sales. The company I'm talking about is TIM. This is a big, the biggest electrotechnical uh, goods distributor in Poland. Um, they are in Warsaw Stock uh, Exchange since 1998. This is a quite established company, very big company, which was like truly offline business. Uh, they have clients from the construction business area and you should believe me that this is a very difficult business area, especially in Poland. This is the vice president who says here that uh, this was truly a great challenge to actually transform a completely offline company and in corporate e-commerce, not only to the customers, but also to the employees who actually had to changed the way they were thinking. The whole structure had to change in order to achieve these goals that they, that they wanted to achieve. And this was a very, very hard task to do. So what was the aim of, uh, of the whole project? It was diversification of business and uh, improvement of effectiveness. This, of course, sounds very sophisticated, but what it really means is that they wanted to expand their customer base they wanted just to sell more to different customer groups, and they wanted to expand product range and add new product categories. Uh, when we started the cooperation with them, they had 49 product categories. Imagine putting these into their e-commerce. Like when you are in an, in an e-commerce which sells, let's say, clothes, you have like three main categories, four. They had 49. This is something that is like very hard to do for, for a normal user to find a product within these 49 categories. We actually did the magic and aut automatically we uh, decreased the number of uh, product categories to less than 20, which is still a lot, but not that much. This is the timeline of our cooperation. We started in 2011, and believe me, this was the year that actually uh, B2C retailers didn't believe in e-commerce. So uh, finding a customer or a client for us who wanted in 2011 build B2B e-commerce, this was huge. Yeah? So we started the cooperation in 2011, then uh, in 2012, 
Oh, this is important. We started the cooperation in 2011 uh, with the B2C shop. And why we did that? We did that because it was much um, cheaper to test the hypothesis they, they had. They had the hypothesis that TIM actually can sell online in the matter of logistics, in the matter of inner processes within the company, uh, or in the matter of the offer that they have. Um, so they wanted to test it. They wanted also to test if TIM could actually sell to the individual clients. That's why we put up a very simple and, uh, yeah, it was very simple e-commerce for B2C to test this hypothesis. And uh, as you can see, half, uh, half a year later, we started B2B project because we were sure that it was worth doing. Um, next, we, uh, after a year of work, we switched to Scrum methodology. This was the year that you know, everybody uh, believed that this is the best way of working of, in development. And it was true because two months later, we actually uh, went live with the B2B e-commerce website. Uh, when it went actually, when it went along, uh, we incorporated SWOT team in Divante that I'm going to talk about a bit m more later. Uh, later we did the major redesign because it was, it was the time to do the redesign. We learned a lot of things and it was the time to um, make few things on the e-commerce work better. Now we're, uh, work, we have transferred the hosting last year, and now we're working on advanced big data project. How did the process look like? We started from gathering business expectations from the customer. Uh, we teamed up, up with them. Uh, when we had it gathered, we did the technical analysis and integrations. After that, we did the interaction design. So we designed the mockups and wireframes, uh, which were the basis for graphic design, which was then implemented and tested. And, um, and we have been doing optimization since then. So this is a constant process. And I have to say that I really admire TIM company for understanding how optimization is important in e-commerce because this is not something that you have to do just once. This is something that you have to do like over and over again because you're learning more and more on uh, how your users behave and what they really want to get from your product or your, from your e-commerce. How did we gather business expectations? This is Kasia, our UX designer and UX researcher who actually got out of the building uh, of our office and started talking to sales reps and started talking to technicians who were TIM's customers to get to know what they really wanted. So this is a field study that we conducted and some of the insights that we got, that we got from here is that from, from this research is that sales reps prefer to call their call center rather than do the order directly uh, uh, I'm sorry, they want to directly uh, place an order at the operator rather than through mobile device, through a mo mobile app, let's say. So this is important because it told us that, okay, you don't ha want to or you don't have to invest in mobile app because people just don't want to use it, at least now. Maybe we can think about it in a few years. So this is the value of this kind of research. We did uh, personas. Persona is a fictional identity that reflects uh, one of uh, the user groups. This means that we as user experience designers have to have the empathy to put our ourselves in someone else's shoes to design a great product for them. So we came up with Henry who was 47 and is a technician and we tried to think of what Henry might have feel, what, he, what problems might he have, uh, how TIM can actually help him. Uh, this helped us design functionalities and features which would be actually important for him. This is the way that he is satisfied and TIM is satisfied too. The design phase took us uh, six steps. We started with the workshops with the client. Then we uh, started prototyping. We did the wireframes. 
Um, and this was the part where we generated a lot, a lot of ideas. And we then had to assess, like from the expert point of view, which ideas we really want to test. We put it into the wireframe and did the user research uh, to check which one of these ideas are actually working for, for the company that we were working for. Um, the findings that we got from the user research um, took us some time to polish the, the prototype. Uh, and actually we did, as you can see, this is not the linear process. So this is something that we did four times. Uh, you, prob of course you can do it once, but it won't give you enough insights to actually build the, the end product. The workshops. This is the picture of us working with the client, and as you can see, the client is drawing here. So we're not just asking questions, we are actually making them make their own shop, which is very important because sometimes people think that, oh, I cannot draw, so I cannot design any website. Uh, but they have the knowledge how the, the business is growing. Uh, they know how their customers are thinking because they're in it. Uh, and we know how, how, they sh how this should, all should look like, so we lead the process and we work with them. This is the result of the workshop. As you can see, the mock-ups, they are, you know, hand-drawn, hand and this is fine for this stage, of course. Uh, after drawing these prototypes, we do the digital prototype, which uh, I am sure some of you might have misled that with an actual website, because sometimes you can see not very pretty websites on the internet. But this is the mock-up. This is an interactive mock-up that uh, users can actually click on. Um, they can see different states and so on. So we use this to do the user research, after which, uh, yeah, the user research. Um, we did few iterations of the user research. It takes about eight people to do the test, eight users to do the test, so that we can get enough insights to change the mock-up that we designed. 85% uh, of mistakes that we have done in our prototypes designing them can be detected with six people tested. And the test is like an interview. Uh, we just invited people who might be interested in the um, in, in buying the products, like technicians. Um, th these were people who were very experienced with internet because they, they, they were buying from the internet. But also these were people who didn't use internet at all. And we had to find the common ground here. Um, yeah, so after the user testing, we did the final uh, digital mock-up with, of course, some insights from, from the users. And we did the graphic design. And then we asked ourselves, or TIM asked themselves, uh, what, which technology, technology they would like to uh, use uh, to, to build their e B2B e-commerce. And Magento was and actually is the most popular technology for e-commerces, as you can here see in the chart. This is open source. Open source means that you don't have to actually pay the license for building your e-commerce. You don't need it. You do just need developers who are going to put it up. You have a demo version. Well, you can use a great support from Magento, great uh, pre-built modules that you can just put in your Magento platform so that it's just, well, it's just pretty easy, especially when you want to do a lot of customized features. And that's, the project I'm talking about, because B2, Magento isn't very uh, cut, isn't cut for B2B project. It's more for B2C. This means that we had to do a lot of customization, but it was worth it um, because the, te the technology itself is very solid. Mm -hmm. We are very open to open source pl platforms. So in order to uh, meet B2B needs, we had to come up with ideas how to make it happen, like marketing automation or search that works like Google, uh, with other open source platforms. And these are one of these. 
Here you can hear, see the omnichannel open architecture. You can uh, download this from our blog. The, this is the open source. Uh, these are the open source platforms, platforms that we also work with. And uh, the integrations we did with the TIM are CRM integrations, product management uh, program, warehouse integration, and fact finder integration. Uh, all of these CRM is the most interesting because when a user was, uh, is actually looking for a product that he wants to buy, he puts this product into the basket. The CRM and the recommendation engine works this way, that the customer service at TIM knows what the client actually has in his cart and can call him to help him buy a complementary product or uh, give him a better deal for something if he buys uh, more, let's say. And what's more interesting is that when he agrees with this, the customer service at TIM can actually put these additional products into his basket by, for him. This is called bilateral integration in real time. This is not very common. We had to do a dedicated feature for it. And this is working perfectly for T TIM. Actually, there's a funny story about this because uh, once upon a time, there was a client who put uh, 100 bulbs, light bulbs, into his basket and a huge electric pole. And as you can probably imagine, the delivery for, of this electric pole is not very um, easy, and you have to arrange it and, and do it carefully. That's why a customer service called him, called him and uh, you know, just to discuss uh, the, 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 the delivery. And the, the customer, um, what he did was, you know, I don't really want to buy this electric pole. I put it into my basket because I wanted to negotiate the price for 100 light bulbs. So he knew that if he put something very strange into his basket, the customer service would uh, call him back so that he can actually talk to a human to negotiate the price for the, for the bulbs. And this inspired us to actually do this feature so that you can put something into the basket, but then you can convert, not buy it, or, but convert it into an offer inquiry uh, so that you can negotiate the price with the customer service. Another dedicated uh, functionality was um, TIM sells cables, like the wires, like you can see here. Um, so when they have a, a leftover two and a half kilometer cable and uh, they want to get rid of it, when somebody puts into his basket the same cable but uh, a piece of two kilometers, not two and a half, he can actually see from his basket that uh, he can get a better price for 2.5 kilometer uh, piece than for two kilometers. I'm sorry, this is complicated, but, uh, but you know, you give the choice to the customer. Uh, he, can, he can choose if he wants to buy two, two, two kilometers cable, uh, long cable, or 2.5 uh, piece of the cable. So when you are B2B, you should consider, I think, or we think that uh, you should consider this list of functionalities, which are the list of contractors with verification, individual or collective negotiation of discounts, order files, offer creation, consultants who can accept the order on behalf of the customer, these functionalities are like specific for B2B. You cannot find them uh, in the technology that is not built for B2B. Uh, so what the whole development took us like a few months, uh, over a year. Uh, and we actually, when we actually started and we went live, we went, wanted to be sure that with the number of people who are actually using the website, with the increasing number of people using the website, the scalability and performance uh, is going to be maintained at the same high level so that there won't be any pitfalls. Uh, we used replication of the database to speed up uh, reading operations and data and balance the traffic to database. This is some technical stuff, but we used a lot of uh, tools like uh, Redis, like GlusterFS, Varnish, 
PersonaDB uh, instead of MySQL database. Uh, I really recommend you to read our the, ca the same case study from our website, divante.co, where you can actually read uh, more details about this. But we, it took us some work to actually um, be sure that this whole thing is going to work, no matter how many people is going to be on the website. Uh, a lot of integrations that we did was a risk because every integration is may cause some problems. Uh, that's why we ensure quality by two-phase code review before, uh, after every change or before every change that we want to incorporate in the website. We do a two-phase code review, version control system, ticketing system, monitoring system to, um, in, to monitor integrations. And what if something actually goes wrong? So what if, what if the website goes down? Like when we reached with TIM, 250,000 euro daily revenue, uh, we started to worry uh, that I, they are actually losing like a lot of money because one hour uh, system crash was like more than 10,000 euro loss. So we didn't want it to happen and that's why we created and formed a spe specific, a special group of people who were responsible for this not to happen. Uh, these are the most experienced uh, developers and administrators who control and monitor the system 24-7. They take shifts to do this so that the SLA under one hour is, uh, and they have to react under one hour if something goes wrong. Uh, it means that, and they get paid like a bonus for this. Nobody can, uh, n n not everyone can do this. Uh, you have to pass a special exam to be in this group, so this is uh, like a privilege. And when the SLA is violated, nobody gets paid. Uh, I mean the bonus, of course, uh, f f for doing this extra job. So this is how we uh, manage the big traffic and problems with, with, with system crashes. Uh, yeah, we went, uh, we managed to, uh, to automate tests and automate um, development the way that we could, we managed to de decrease the time of deployment to less than five minutes. Um, to, in order to do this, we created a team of six developers, four developers, one front-end developer, one tester, and plus one, peop one person from TIM, this was a product owner, who actually are working all the time on this project. And they are working very closely, actually there is like 500 meters from our offices, like TIM and ours, so, uh, and this is still the same people, they know, they know the system by heart, and this is, this is just how we do it. And what about the data? Uh, all this, uh, all this, pro this whole project lasted like five years. So we managed to gather a lot, a lot of data uh, that we use. So when we look at Google Analytics of TIM, we actually can see that 97% of customers prefer one specific view of product listing page, which is this one, which is the, the horizontal list, rather than matrix list, uh, like you can see in, let's say, uh, fashion e-commerces uh, very often. So we use it for a redesign. And the business results, which is probably the most interesting thing for you, uh, the, the black line here is the sales from online. So as you can see, it was rapidly growing. And the yellow line here is the number of products available to buy from online, which is also growing. So what about business results that, we, that they had at the beginning? They will actually, did, last year, they did uh, 130 million euro revenue from the whole company, but from online, 67% um, from this, which is 87 million of uh, euro, is from online. So this is like this stopped to be an offline company. It's an online company because uh, less than 35% of their sales comes from offline. So in four years, they managed to transform it 
almost completely, and I believe that these numbers will, will grow. 87% um, of orders uh, at the whole company is from online. Yeah, and actually, uh, customers love it. Uh, you can see the video on the YouTube where customers are, cu TIM customers, uh, are saying that the way they do business now with TIM has changed the way they worked because it's much easier for them. We, uh, we did imagine 2016, which is a great success for, for us as, as builders of this success and for TIM who actually you know, took the prize. Uh, the whole case has been uh, depicted in Harvard Business Review, where you can read more about it, and you can also read about it, uh, more about it at our website, divante.co, uh, where you can read all the technical stuff that you might be interested in. Uh, so what's next? This is Forrester Research, uh, which says that B2B e-commerce companies now are investing at the first place in automated pricing optimization and personalized recommendations. And this is what we are going to actually work on with uh, TIM using big data. Now, uh, thank you. This was a lot of information. I hope you got something from it. Uh, I know, know that the time is... Yeah, but still we have time for two questions. So I hope there will be some. Okay, so the first one uh, I think I'll start. Um, as far as I know, you are as well trained psychologist. Yeah. Uh, so please tell me how hard or how did you manage to convince the managing board of TIM uh, to? I'm sorry. How how did you manage to convince the managing board of TIM? to change whole selling process to online? Uh, well, we, don't really, we didn't really actually have to, uh, we didn't have to convince them because TIM is like a great client for us who understands much more than, than the 90% of clients that we have. And he understands that e-commerce is the future thing, the, is the future. So they had, to, and they knew that the sooner they, they do it, the better for them. And they are a leading company, B2B uh, company in electrical goods right now in Poland. So I think we didn't have to convince them. They were, they were great about this. Okay, so are there any questions? So to end it somehow or summarize it, uh, do you have any, um, let's say, advice for offline shops, offline commerce? Uh, what point should be starting point to change the sales to the online? Well, starting point, point should always be a user. So you should probably ask your users and you have to do it on your own. You have the data from, uh, from your company right now and you just have to collect it and see what users are actually doing right now and what are their, their needs right now. Uh, E-commerce is great and probably it's... it's the sooner the better, right? Mobile is also great. The sooner the better. That's, you know, this is quite obvious, but that's, that's what it is. I'm sorry. <laughs> I don't have any great insight about that. Okay, so thank you very much. Thank you. Uh, one more announcement. One more announcement. We are based, our stand is based across the entrance here. Uh, and you can actually win a code review of your website. Uh, you just have to put in the business card and we'll, we'll just choose someone who is going to get a free code review. So feel free to come, feel free to talk to us. Yeah, thank you again. Thank you.